I've been studying salamanders in Florida for over 50 years. I got my master's and PhD on salamander biology at FSU up here in the Panhandle. You might well ask, well, what's the value of a salamander or any kind of creature or plant? Wow. Well, the value is not just in the plant itself, which has its own interesting story, but the ecological relationships that plant or animal has with the ground, the, the geological environment it lives in, and the other plants and animals. So ecology, the larger story of the planet and how we live in it, are, oh, there's eggs, has a lot to do with understanding how other plants and animals make their living in environments. Over the decades that Bruce Means has studied snakes and salamanders in our area, he's gotten to know our local ecosystems as well as anyone. In this three-part adventure, we'll get to know three quintessential Florida wetland environments through three salamanders that have featured prominently in Dr. Means's research. We start along the Chipola River, where we hope to find one of his newest discoveries. Well, this is what science is all about. Science is about being interested in something and studying it, and in my case, it's something that not many people would do. Get on your hands and knees in wet, mucky seepage slope, tearing apart the leaf litter, looking for whatever they can find. And in my case, I found this new salamander in this stuff. One of the places I dearly love is a swamp like this where you find muck. Now, if you look upstream, you'll see the slope coming down and there's a kind of a little terrace that looks grassy and then it drops into the swamp and a huge lake of water underlies this sand. And then wherever that sand and the aquifer underneath it are intercepted by a slope, there is seepage. Seepage water is extremely clean. Mm. No reason to go thirsty here. The animals and the plants that live in this kind of seepage environment are extremely adapted to the buffered thermal regime of the water that seeps out of the slope. And that's why these sphagnum bogs and all the little salamanders are uniquely adapted to this kind of habitat and only found in it. Which brings us to this guy. I started finding about 20 years ago small salamanders we're going to see here in a minute that all looked alike, but I thought were likely to be different species. A graduate student, Ken Ray at FSU, worked with me to discover that this one group of salamanders that was thought to be one species is actually at least five species. And one of the new species is right here. This species is named after a biologist. It's called Eurycia hillisii. Hillis is dwarf salamander. Great, look, a great sphagnum. I mean, we'll, we'll get one. They're not easy to find in the sphagnum beds along the slope. big old spiders, and it turns out they have very weak mouth parts. She's the golden orb weaver that creates a web that has yellow goldish color and is a very fine strong line. Dr. Means finds another salamander within the complex. This is the eastern dwarf salamander with a silver belly. The one we're looking for has got an orange belly. Now that was interesting that we turned this one up. So the other one is probably further up slope because that's where I found them before. The Hillis's dwarf salamander occupies a slightly drier environment than the silver bellied. Now that science recognizes them as separate species, we can better begin to understand their ecological niches. In our next adventures, we learn of two other salamanders living in two entirely different wetland environments, which also used to be considered a single species. It's the story of Bruce Means's first discovery. For WFSU, I'm Rob Diaz de Villegas.